Mom, are you going to be late again? Not if I can help it, honey. Dayton Honda, please hold. Service line four. Dayton Honda. Dayton Honda, please hold. Parts line five. Dayton Honda. Yes, I please hold. Yes, can I help you? Yes, I need help with my Honda. It keeps dying. Just a moment. Norma, do you know where the hard copies for these RLs are? I don't know. You'll have to check with Marty. Service line four. Marty, call extension 23. Marty, call extension 23. And ask us about our monthly service special. At Deaton Honda, we're here to serve, and your satisfaction is our top priority. Thank you for calling Deaton Honda. All of our service lines are busy at the moment, but a service advisor will be right with you. Yeah, like when? Mom, should I call Sarah for a ride? <sighs> Maybe better. Taking care of the car is only part of our responsibility. The other part is taking care of the customer. Both are essential for a successful transaction. You can fix the car while not taking care of the customer and still end up with a problem. It happens. Morning rush, a service drive full of customers, phone lines lit and flashing, and a customer on line four who's running late with a daughter that needs to get to school, a job to be on time for, and a Honda that stalls. It only took a few minutes, seconds really, but time is one of the most important things to our customers. Demographic studies show that Honda customers are more educated, more professional, more upscale. That results in their being more time-driven customers. Time has become as important as money to them. And when they're dissatisfied, statistics show the majority of them, over 70%, don't bother to complain. They just take their business elsewhere. And that's not good for you or for Honda. Every service advisor could take care of every customer if they had an unlimited amount of time. The fact is, we don't. So how do we reconcile the real world with our desire to give our customers value-added service? In this series on telephone skills, we're going to look at one of the most valuable tools you have for reaching, serving, and satisfying your customers. The telephone used by over 200 million people every day to make literally billions of calls. It's typical these days to meet someone by phone before you meet face to face. With early bird customers, you might talk to them two or three times before meeting them. In some cases, this may be the only tool you have to ensure customer satisfaction and repeat business. That's what makes the phone so crucial. All the customer has to go on are the words you say and how you say them. For the moment, nothing else matters because the customer can't see you. If you handle the phone poorly, you most probably will offend or anger the customer without ever knowing it. They just don't call back. That's what this telephone skills series is all about. This initial part of the series has five specific objectives. When you've completed it, You'll be able to identify prerequisite skills that will help you use the telephone, identify specific behaviors such as courtesy, interest, and helpfulness, and how you can use them with your phone customers. Identify the factors in the work environment that can support successful telephone contacts. Identify procedural problems that can interfere with successful telephone contacts. And Identify the elements of personal organization necessary to successful phone contacts. Remember, there are two other parts to this series. They're called handling routine calls and handling difficult calls. 
Each contains information you won't find anywhere else in the series. So what went wrong with our customer? What could have prevented her from becoming frustrated to the point of taking her business elsewhere? Two important points have been overlooked here. First, remember, when someone calls you, they're not calling the dealership. They're calling Honda. To them, you are Honda. They're not thinking, okay, I'm going to be talking to someone who had to get up at 5.30 this morning so they could be at work at the dealership in order for me to call them at 7.30. No, all they're thinking about is, my car needs fixing, and how long will it take? I own a Honda. I'm going to call Honda to get it fixed. You are Honda. That makes you one of the most important people in their world right now. You have the power and responsibility to affect their lives. They depend on their cars. And when it needs something, they depend on you. Use your responsibility to help them. To do that, put yourself in their position. Think like a customer. Think of the car as your car. Approach their needs as your needs. Be the customer's advocate. How would remembering these points have changed things? Good morning, Dayton Honda Service. This is Linda. Yes, Linda, I need help with my Honda. It keeps dying. Yes, ma'am, we can help you. May I have your name, please? Potter. Margaret Potter. Let me connect you with the service advisor, Miss Potter. Can you hold for a moment? Yes, but please hurry. I'm already running late this morning. I understand. I will. Service, customer holding on line four. Service, customer holding oh, on line four. Like we'll get you going. Miss Potter? Yes. Thank you for waiting. All of our advisors are busy at the moment. May I ask if you're calling to set an appointment or if you have an immediate service need? Both, actually. The car is running rough and dying, but I think I can make it in if I can get a loaner or if you have a driver who can stop by Lakeview School and then take me to work. I'll have a shuttle driver wait for you. When will you be in? I'll be there in 10 minutes. Thank you, Linda. Linda used specific telephone skills, courtesy, interest, and helpfulness to take care of her customer, Ms. Potter. And it didn't take her any longer than normal to make her customer glad she had called Deaton Honda. You care about them. You're not just there because you work at, at the dealership. You're there because you care about the person. And I think that puts them at ease and makes them feel more comfortable. I tell them what my name is. I ask their name, and that way it makes it a little more personal. They're not talking to a, a computer or a robot or whatever. They are talking to a real human being, and so am I. Yes, I write down the notes, and then that way, if I have any questions, I can always refer back to the notes so that I have taken down, and it helps me to help them a little better. I keep a list on my phone, and it helps to remind me to be courteous to the customer, to always ask the customer's name, and to always give the customer my name, and to keep a chipper voice because there are days when I am maybe having a bad day and I really don't feel like having this voice but because the customer does come first I try to make sure that I'm happy that my voice is at least happy so that the customer is happy and the customer knows that I'm listening to him and that I care about what he has to say my list looks like this doesn't have to be anything formal just something you can glance at while you're on the telephone to remind you of the key steps. It helps you on those, everybody has them, tough days when you wish you could be someplace else. Follow your list. Maintain the professional approach your telephone customers need and your job calls for. Courtesy and customer service include a variety of things. It's accepting the responsibility that you are Honda to the caller. It's giving the customer confidence with a statement like, we can help you. It's being interested in the customer's needs. It's being helpful by offering the customer options and solutions. It's going the extra mile for your customers. 
on the lookout for ways to help. That's courtesy, and that's a good definition of value added as well. It's being the customer's advocate. Every person in the dealership makes an individual contribution to the satisfaction of every customer. That means that every individual in the dealership can make a difference in whether the customer is happy or not, whether they come back or not, whether they remain a Honda customer or not. Puts this tool in something of a different light. The biggest obstacle I face is the fact that customers can't see me. I have to use tone of voice to gain their confidence. The phone can't be taken for granted. Uh, even though it may become routine to me, to that customer it's not routine. They call often from their home or their work. They're not under the same kind of pressure I'm under working in the shop. I can't be uh, rushing them or, or frantic to get them off the phone. I have to take the time to listen to them. Uh, letting them get it off their chest uh, to get beyond that initial anger is uh, very important. Often they will thank me just for allowing them to do that. The telephone is the most effective way to prepare the customer for coming to us. There is something about solving a problem for a customer and hearing that sigh of relief from the other side of the line. But effective telephone skills go beyond warm fuzzies. There are very practical benefits for you. They lead to less time on the phone, less stress, repeat business, more personal success, and a more successful dealership service operation. Good morning, Deaton Honda Service. This is Norma. Yeah, I need to talk to somebody about my car. I'll connect you with the service advisor. Please hold. Good morning, Deaton Honda Service. This is Norma. Yeah, I need a price on a tune-up kit for a Civic. Just a moment, I'll connect you with parts. Service, customer holding on line three. Service, customer holding on line three. Parts, line two. Parts, line two. Good morning, Deaton Honda Service. This is Norma. Oh, I thought nobody was going to answer. I apologize for the wait. Can I help you? Yes, you can give me some details about your ad in this past Sunday's paper. I'm sorry, I don't have the ad here. It's about the free filter with an oil change. Is there somebody there who can help me? One moment, I'll connect you with a service advisor. If the phone system is inadequate, or there are simply not enough people to operate it properly, these problems need to be identified and solutions suggested. Maybe backup procedures are needed for peak times, like early morning or late afternoon. A little help for 15 minutes could make a world of difference. When the dealership offers a specific promotion, a copy of the ad can be the best preparation for handling calls about it. Call the dealership sometime and ask for yourself. It's a great way to check out the system in action. Little things, attention to details, can make all the difference. Good morning, Deaton Honda. This is Norma. Yeah, I need to talk to somebody Good about morning, my car. Good morning, Deaton Honda Service. Yes, this sir. May I have your name? Steve Parks. Parks. Okay. Did you wish to set up an appointment for service, Mr. Parks? Yes. I need two new tires for my Good Accord. Morning, Deaton Honda I'm service. sorry, Mr. This Parks. We don't sell tires. However, one of our service advisors oh, could recommend a tire dealer to you. Would that help? Oh, Can yes. Please. Okay. If you'll hold for just a moment, I'll connect you with a service advisor. Yes, I have the ad. It includes a free oil filter with an oil change. And if I want something else done to the car while it's in? Yes, we can schedule that at the same time. May I connect you with the service advisor? Yes, please. Would you mind holding for one moment? Not at all. Our dispatcher will write tickets, answer or field the service phone calls uh, so that uh, a customer doesn't get bounced around uh, two or three times at the same phone when obviously nobody's going to answer it, they're with another customer. So from that standpoint, uh, uh, we can go from two service advisors to four service advisors if, you know, acting as service advisors. And basically, you know, it's understood here that uh, the customer, anything to do with a customer comes first. Anything else that you're doing uh, is secondary to that. So in the we have additional uh, manpower available to help if it's uh, extra busy. Thank you. The service advisors uh, and I are, are in touch, obviously, every day. 
and uh, so that nothing nothing is uh, that can be improved it needs to wait for a meeting uh, the time to bring that's up at the time you realize there's a better way of doing it. Making sure things are running smoothly involves everyone in the dealership with the understanding that efficient procedures mean a more profitable operation and satisfied customers. That means setting priorities and reviewing the way work is currently handled and accomplished with a free flow of ideas and suggestions for getting the job done. Establishing a customer scheduling system and a person responsible for it can tame the typical morning chaos and it can free service advisors to meet customers on the service drive while returning customer calls when necessary. Getting ready for the phone also involves personal preparation. Again, the little things that define value added. They might include knowing the policies of your dealership. Could you answer a question without having to transfer it? Know your dealership personnel and organization. When you must pass a call along, make sure it goes to the right person the first time. Know your product as much as possible. You're the front line of information for the customer. Know the limits of your authority and responsibilities. Help as much as you can, but not more than your position allows. Have reference information available. It may be an RO or a summary of the service menu, but having information at hand is a key to efficient telephone skills. It builds customer confidence to hear, yes, I have that information right here. Be prepared for questions. What would you want to know? Could you answer your own questions? Don't be afraid to say, I'll find out. Taking responsibility builds confidence in customers. Giving them answers ASAP will confirm that confidence. <laughs> All right. At this point, you should have your five objectives firmly in hand. You should be able to identify prerequisite skills that will help you use the telephone, identify specific behaviors such as courtesy, interest, and helpfulness, and how you can use them with your phone customers, identify the factors in the work environment that can support successful telephone contacts, identify procedural problems that can interfere with successful telephone contacts, and identify the elements of personal organization necessary to successful phone contacts. All in all though, remember that building customer confidence in your dealership's ability to fix their car and meet their expectations is the cornerstone of Honda service and it's only as good as you are. You are Honda. You're the difference. Stop by How you use the telephone is an work. essential part of what separates Honda service from the crowd. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Thank you, Linda. Which is what we all want. Good morning, Deaton Honda. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Deaton Honda. Answering the telephone as quickly as possible. Remembering the simple courtesies of giving your name, identifying the department, and being pleasant and professional. And listen. I try to catch all the phones on three rings, uh, just for just common courtesy, because I know how much I hate it when I call somewhere else and the phone rings forever. And um, I treat everybody like they were a friend. You go out of your way to do something extra for them to try to gain their confidence and their, their business. I try to keep everything polite and quick as possible. I want them to come back. That, I guess that's the bottom line is, is getting your customer in and, and keeping them. You don't want them to not be happy with you and go somewhere else. About a minute to gain the confidence of the caller to give him or her the assurance that you and the dealership you represent can do the job. 60 or so seconds to get things off on the right foot. That's where we'll begin in this portion of the telephone skill series. This second of three programs on using the telephone for quality customer service and satisfaction. The other programs in this series deal with general telephone skills and with handling difficult calls. Here, we're talking about routine calls with these two objectives. After watching this video, you will be able to identify the steps of answering an incoming call, 
focusing on the telephone contact flow, and list the steps of making an outgoing call, including selling needed service and making an active delivery. The key is to concentrate on those little things, the details that will provide the customer with Honda value-added service. Look at this typical incoming call. We'll add the steps of the telephone contact flow as they happen. Norma, do you know where the hard copies for these RLs are? I don't know. You'll have to check with Marty. Marty, call extension 23, please. Marty, call extension 23, please. Good morning, Deaton Honda Service. This is Linda. May I help you? Uh, hello. Um, I have a Honda Accord Coupe. And I'm coming up on my 30,000 mile service. Uh, can I make an appointment to bring the car in tomorrow? Is that okay? Yes, sir. We can help you with your appointment, and our shuttle service can give you a ride to work. It only takes seconds to move through the initial steps of the telephone contact flow and let your customer know you can help. In our program on general telephone skills, we've already talked about being courteous, interested, and helpful as part of value-added customer service. And these skills play an important part in the initial steps that lead to taking specific action on the customer's behalf. Uh, could I talk with someone who could explain the 30,000-mile service to me? Uh, just what goes into it? If you can hold for just one moment, I can connect you with one of our service advisors who can explain it to you. Fine. Just a moment. They have a, like, kind of a cheat sheet of certain types of services that we do, 15,000 miles and 30,000. They try and ask, you know, what does that include, and there's a whole list. You know, we try and run down that list as quickly as possible. Sometimes people don't want to hear 26 list of things that they actually do, but just the basics and how much they cost. I answer a lot of those questions. So it kind of relieves the service advisors when they're really busy with customers. You try and explain to them if their serv particular service advisor is busy with a customer, you explain to them they're busy. Can someone else help you? Can I help you in any way? You know, can I take your name and number, have them call you back? You know, things like that. So they feel like they're important too instead of just going, oh, well, he's busy, you know. So you try and help them that way. Most people have first contact with the dealership on the phone. And if you don't, you know, answer the phone right away or properly, they just kind of get a bad taste in their mouth. So you have to kind of make sure that you do make a good impression. Just the tone of your voice, I think, changes the what you say and how you say it is more important than, you know, if you just say, hello, this is Christine, if you, instead of saying, hello, this is Christine, can I help you? You know, it changes the attitude towards the other end of the phone, I think. And the customer will appreciate your attention to other steps in the telephone contact flow. Yes, the brakes will be inspected. Front and back? Yes, sir. We'll inspect the front calipers and discs as well as the pads. And we'll inspect the rear brakes, note the amount of wear front and back. Well, thank you, Rod. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, Mr. Gentry. You're scheduled at 7.30 Wednesday morning for your 30,000-mile maintenance on your 1987 Honda Accord. If you'll pull right into the service drive, we'll have everything ready for you. Will that be okay? No problem. Can I do anything else to help you, Mr. Gentry? No, that's all. All right. Thanks again for calling Deaton Honda, and we'll see you in the morning. See you then. Bye-bye. The telephone contact flow. Look at the steps one more time. Answer the telephone promptly. Establish rapport. Listen carefully. Formulate your plan of action. Communicate your plan of action. Get the caller's agreement on that plan of action. Follow through. Coordinate action proactively. Provide information professionally. Express appreciation. On an average day, your dealership will go through the individual steps of the contact flow a couple of hundred times. It's most successful when attention is paid to the little things and to the details like personal organization and preparation. Having a scratch pad close at hand to take notes. Having a service menu price by model if necessary, and having a list of the most common repairs complete with replacement parts and current prices. They'll all help you handle incoming calls more easily and serve your customer more effectively. 
Make sure your maintenance intervals and service procedures match what's in the owner's manual, service manuals, and service news. And make sure that when you provide a caller with information, you provide them with complete information. As important and helpful as it is to provide information over the telephone, incorrect information and incomplete information are common causes of customer dissatisfaction. Incorrect information usually occurs when the customer has a resource that contradicts the one you are using. It may be an owner's manual or perhaps a past service record. The same problem can occur when the information provided is confusing, too complex for the caller's understanding, or is not specific and definite. The mistake of providing incomplete information has a similar cause. It usually comes from not taking the time to review the information with customers to make sure it's enough to meet their needs. It may also come from passing off questions with a don't worry, we'll take care of it response or attitude. We want the caller to have confidence in the work we can do for them. But if there's something we can't do, they need to know that too. Taking a moment to clarify and explain will prevent misunderstandings when the customer arrives at the dealership. It's all part of preparation within the telephone contact flow. Preparation, decision making, and problem solving are also key steps in making an outgoing telephone call. In fact, the essential steps of the telephone contact flow are incoming calls. When I get ready to call a customer back, I need to prepare myself mentally so that I have clearly in mind what I want to say. I need to present to the customer concisely information I need to convey. I will look at the work order, check the customer's name, um, check the recommendations. Again, if I have any questions on those, I will check with my mechanic before I call a customer. Uh, when I call them, I tell them why I'm calling them. I tell them what the need is. Usually if it's a brake related item, I'll tell them that they're worn down to the limit sensors. I'll have a price for them at that time. I will tell them uh, how long it will take, if there's any anticipated delays due to parts hold up, um, confirm the price to them. Usually sometime during this conversation they've indicated that they want it done or they'll need to call me back. Or if they can't do it, they just say they can't do it. If a customer has questions regarding what I'm proposing, then I have to have the answers for him. If we need to prioritize repairs because they can only afford to do a given item, then I will certainly agree with that. I don't try and push anything on them. They ultimately have to make the decisions because it's their car. Sometimes some customers, for various reasons, will not be able to do a given item on that day. They've indicated possibly they may be able to do it later, but they're just not sure. So I agree with them at that point. That's the best thing to do. What I'll do is I'll take my service callback file here, and I have Amy Krauss on here. I'm supposed to call her back next week. Um, I come in on Mondays and I check my callbacks for that week and then I'll give them a call two or three weeks from now. Customers appreciate that because they know you are sincerely concerned about their car's needs and usually by that time they're ready to do something with the car. There are some things that we're not capable of doing here in shop that I have to contract out, for instance body or paint work or glass work in this case, or in some instances rekeying a lock. So we keep our vendors that we use in this file here. If we have certain time available during the day, if the car is here in the shop, then I can call these people and they will come in and perform that service for us. But infrequently, a customer will call and they have an emergency, it's an immediate need, I can't work them in or we don't do it, so I simply give them this number. Making an active delivery is a typical outgoing call, and it emphasizes the value of preparation, decision making, and problem solving, although most of the steps have been completed by the delivery stage. Still, each step is summarized as you explain to the customer what was done to the car and confirm the details of pickup. Hello, Mr. Gentry. This is Rod Schaefer at Deaton Honda. I just wanted to let you know that your car is ready. Finished early? Yes. You can even come and pick it up earlier than scheduled if you'd like. No, uh, I'll probably still come after work. Uh, I appreciate the call, though. Do you have a moment? I could go over the details of your 30,000-mile service if you'd like. Well, I have to go to a meeting right now, but uh, you were pretty thorough when I talked to you yesterday. Well, I wanted to let you know that your car is ready, and we recharge the air conditioning system and check the brakes. Okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll check it when I come by. 
Uh, is there anything else? No, that's all, Mr. Gentry. Your total bill comes to two ninety four ninety four. dollars Now I'll let Linda know you're coming in at 6, right? Right, 6 o'clock. We'll see you then, Mr. Gentry. Right, bye. Okay, bye-bye. The active delivery telephone call has its own specific steps. First, organize your information in order to present it properly and correctly to the customer. Have all the information you need in front of you, including the completed repair order. And to Explain what has been done to the customer's car breaks. and be ready to answer any questions the customer might have about a specific no, part of the all, service. Confirm both the total cost of the service and the time the customer will arrive to pick up the car. And express appreciation to the customer for their business. All of this prevents questions at 6 o'clock when the customer picks up the car. Routine calls, incoming or outgoing, can be the most important calls of the day. And what you've just seen should prepare you to identify the steps of answering an incoming call, focusing on the telephone contact flow, and identify the steps of making an outgoing call, including selling needed service and making an active delivery. Keeping a keen eye for the details, being prepared to offer the little things. That's what separates Honda's value-added service from the others. Customer satisfaction is the hallmark of Honda automotive service. In fact, we pride ourselves on going the extra mile to provide value-added customer service. It's part of what makes Honda products and Honda customers stand out from the crowd. So what do you do when the customer isn't happy? How do you handle a customer complaint? Is there any way to successfully tell the customer no? And where do your telephone skills fit into the whole picture? Those are the questions we'll answer in this program of the Performance Telephone Skills Series, Handling Difficult Calls. When we've finished, you should be able to identify the steps of handling a customer complaint call. Identify techniques for how to say no when necessary in an effective manner. And do both things in a professional way that shows your interest in the customer's satisfaction and repeat business, even in a difficult situation. Before we work through the following scenarios, remember that this is the third part of the telephone skills series, and you should have become familiar with the techniques in parts one and two already. It's important to watch each program carefully. Dayton Honda Service, this is Linda. Yes, Linda. This is Lawrence Gentry. I had my cord worked on yesterday at your dealership. Yes, Mr. Gentry, can I help you? Uh, well, I don't know. I was wondering if I could talk to Rod. See, my car is doing something. Uh, there's a noise, and uh, I'd like to talk to him about it. All right, Mr. Gentry, I'll transfer your call to Rod. Can you hold for a moment? Sure. Hold on. Rod Schaefer, call 23. Rod Schaefer, 23. This is Rod. Rod, I've got a Mr. Gentry on line three. He was in yesterday? Yeah, he had a major service. That's right, on his accord. He says his car is making a noise and he'd like to talk to you. Okay, is he the call on three? Yes. Okay, thanks a lot. I got it. Hi, this is Rod. Uh, hello, Rod. This is uh, Lawrence Gentry. I had my accord service there yesterday, and I noticed something on the way home that I don't think was there before. What's that? Well, it's in my air conditioning. Oh? Huh? There's a noise every time I turn it on. Oh, that's odd. Well, you remember I asked you to look at my air conditioning yesterday in addition to the 30,000 miles service? It didn't seem to work well on warm days. You did work on the air conditioning yesterday, didn't you? Well, yes, we checked the air conditioning. It was low on Freon, so we added a little bit, which is uh, sometimes required. But I don't see how charging the system would cause any noise. What kind of a noise is it? Well, it's a banging, knocking noise, and uh, it wasn't there when I brought the car to you yesterday morning. Well, that's why I'm calling. Uh, could something have uh, gone wrong during the service? Well, nothing the technician did during the service would have caused the noise in the AC. Sounds like your compressor's got a problem. What? Uh, here you are. 87 LXI Accord. Yep, it's probably the compressor. Why don't you bring the car in and let's check it out. But the problem wasn't there yesterday morning when I brought the car to you. That's why I'm calling. You know, it just seems a little too coincidental to me. Do you remember, did you have the extended warranty in your car? The original warranty ran out after 12,000 miles.
I don't think this customer is satisfied. Nor has the situation been resolved by the service advisor inviting him back in. What went wrong here? Mr. Gentry's question started out as a point of curiosity. What could Rod have done to take care of it before it became a complaint? The answer begins with a return to personal preparation. Preparing yourself to serve the caller with an attitude of interest and helpfulness, no matter who's calling or for what reason. Remember, remove distractions. Put other items aside when talking on the phone. Concentrate. One customer, one caller at a time. Have something to write on. Take notes. It helps your listening. Remember to be pleasant. The basic skills of courtesy, interest, and helpfulness apply to every call. Now, a caller doesn't have to be screaming in your ear to make it a complaint call. Using these personal preparation skills for every call will help you be prepared in the event of a complaint. If you can get their trust over the phone and when you're talking to them personally, uh, it, it's an extension of that and so most of our business is by phone. It seems to relieve some of the anger if they can uh, say they, their um, uh, story first and then hear our, our story or uh, just taking care of their problem by listening. It has calmed them down considerably. That's the first step. You have to calm them down. Put yourself in the position of the caller and do what they expect. If they expect that you be courteous and helpful and maybe more so than what you think that they would need, do it. It only takes a few extra seconds. Solving problems is the cornerstone of Honda value-added service. And there are key points to setting a problem-solving tone with the caller. Using your basic skills checklist can be very valuable. Here, watch how it works. Hello, Mr. Gentry. This is Rod Schaefer. Uh, hello, Rod. Um, I had my Accord service there yesterday, and uh, I noticed something on the way home that uh, I don't think was there before. Yeah, that's what Linda said. Can you describe exactly what it is that you noticed, Mr. Gentry? It's in the air conditioning. Oh, I see. As soon as I turn it on, there's a banging or a knocking noise. It, it's pretty bad. A banging or knocking noise as soon as you turn on the AC? And that's right. Uh, I'm sure it wasn't there when I brought the car to you yesterday. I can understand your concern, Mr. Gentry. It may be something was not properly adjusted, or it may be something entirely different from the service you had done. Either way, with your approval, I'd like to have it checked out as soon as possible. We'll have a top technician look it over right away, and hopefully we can solve this problem as soon as possible. When could you come in so we could take a look at it? I'm sorry for the inconvenience. The service advisor here hasn't said anything substantially different from the previous conversation. There's been no commitment to fix the customer's car, and there's been no defensiveness about the new problem. However, his attitude of interest and helpfulness come through loud and clear. Put yourself in Mr. Gentry's shoes for a moment. He has limited technical experience, and he may not want His concern is getting the car fixed, and fixed properly in a timely manner. As far as he's concerned, it's very possible that a slipped wrench or a misdirected hammer could have done something to his car. The one thing he does know, it wasn't there before, and he didn't do it. It costs you nothing to be courteous and professional, but it can set the tone of the entire transaction with the caller. Maintaining your professionalism will help you maintain control of the situation if things begin to heat up. And remember to apologize to the customer for any inconvenience. I apologize for the inconvenience. And what happens when I bring the car in again? Are you going to fix it? When you bring the car in, I'll arrange a test drive. And I'll ride with you. That way we can confirm the problem together. Then I'll have the same technician that worked on your Accord double check all the adjustments and settings he did during the service. That way we'll be talking about what we know for sure and about what needs to be done. Can we approach it that way? All right, but we already know my car has a problem it didn't have 24 hours ago. So 
if I can uh, get to the bottom of the problem, it helps to get them neutralized and then you can talk to them in a rational way. I, I don't allow myself to... Uh, the customer has the right to be angry, I don't. I put myself in this position to service them and if I tend to lose my temper or lose my ability to think through the problem, then, then you lose the customer. Keeping cool and maintaining control of the conversation builds on the relationship between you and the customer. That's extremely important to have established if things get tougher. Four points to avoid. Avoid arguing with the caller. Avoid sounding disinterested. Avoid excuses. Don't blame someone else. And avoid flippant remarks. Maybe an attempt to be funny. The caller could take it the wrong way. Always remember, the caller can't see you. Lawrence Gentry. Hello, Mr. Gentry. This is Rod Schaefer, service advisor at Deaton Honda. Yes. I have some information about your Accord. Do you have time for me to discuss it with you? All right. First, let me review what we've done. We've had a chance to double check the car and all the settings were correct. We went ahead, as we discussed, and performed a diagnosis. And we found that the noise in your air conditioner is due to a faulty compressor. And how did the uh, compressor become faulty? Air conditioning compressors do occasionally fail. It's not common, but it's not unheard of for a compressor to fail in a car with the number of miles. And how much does it cost to fix? Well, the repair will involve replacing both the air conditioning compressor and the receiver dryer unit, and then evacuating and recharging the system. Total parts and labor will come to about $691. What? $691? Well, what that will do is... I don't care what it'll do. Look, the fact of the matter is my car did not have this problem when I brought it to you. And it had it as soon as I picked it up. That tells me that one of your mechanics did something. He dropped something or, or slipped up somehow and screwed up my car. I'm not about to pay you $691 to fix your mistake. Well, I understand your feelings, Mr. Gentry, but I can assure you that the problem is purely coincidental with the service. Yeah, too coincidental if you ask me. Rod, I want the car fixed. Well, then may I give permission to the technician to install the new compressor? Exactly, but I'm not going to pay for it. I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do. You understand perfectly. I'm telling you to fix the mistake that your people caused and to give me my car back the way it was before. We want you to be happy, Mr. Gentry, and we want your car to run exactly the way you want it to. Well, then fix it for free. <sighs> well, that's an unusual request, but let me suggest something. Let me discuss the situation with my service manager. What's his name? Marty Dietrich. How do you spell his last name? I-E-T-R-I-C-H. As I said, let me discuss the situation with Marty and see what can be done. Will you be available at this number? The only thing that better be done is to have my car fixed. I understand your position. Will you be available at this number? Yes. Okay, I'll call you back then. Fine. If the customer loses his or her composure over price or a particular part of the repair, you must maintain control of the conversation. Two things. Isolate the customer's problem and keep the conversation moving to a solution of that problem. How would remembering these points have changed things? What? $691? Mr. Gentry, it appears that you think this is too much. Is that correct? Absolutely. The fact of the matter is that my car didn't have this problem when I brought it to you. And it had it as soon as I picked it up. That tells me that one of your mechanics did something. He dropped something or, or slipped up somehow and screwed up my car. You're saying that the problem is one of my technicians' fault, while we feel that the problem is purely coincidental with the servicing and charging of your compressor. It seems that we're in an impasse, aren't we? Well, I'm not about to pay you $691 to fix your mistake. Well, I can understand your feelings, Mr. Gentry, and I do want to resolve this. I don't know where you're headed with this but I want the car fixed. We want you to be happy, Mr. Gentry, and we want your car running exactly the way you want it to. Here's what I'd like to do for you, if it's okay. I'd like to discuss this situation over with my service manager. The reason I want to do that is to make sure that I've done my job as well as I can. Would that be okay? What's his name? Marty Dietrich. 
How do you spell his last name? D-I-E-T-R-I-C-H. As I said, let me talk the situation over with Marty and see what can be done. Fine. Uh, one last thing, Mr. Gentry. If we can't give you what you want, is there anything else we could do to resolve this problem? Well, the only thing that better be done is to have my car fixed. I understand your position. Will you be at this number? Yes. Okay, I'll call you back within the hour and give you our position on whether we can assist you in this matter or not. Fine. Okay, bye-bye. Very important. Ask the customer what will make him or her happy. Is it all or nothing? Is there a middle ground of compromise? Again, it costs you nothing to ask, and the question keeps the negotiations open. Hopefully, the caller's complaint can be solved without incident. If that's impossible, it's very important to follow specific steps. First, make sure you know what the customer wants and why. The customer here wants his car fixed for nothing because he's convinced the dealership caused the problem. Explore all the options your dealership can offer the customer and make sure the list is complete before calling the customer back. Lawrence Gentry. Mr. Gentry, this is Ron Schaefer from Deaton Honda. Do you have a moment to discuss your accord? Yes. I've had a chance to discuss your request with my service manager and also to speak with the technician once again. And here's what we've come up with. There are really only two ways this situation is going to be solved. You're either going to fix his car for nothing as a policy expense, or you're not. Now, if Mr. Gentry is a long-standing dealership customer, your service manager may decide that making the repair is the best way to satisfy him and keep his future business. In making this decision, always weigh the cost of the future. You can invest nothing here and lose any possible future business from Mr. Gentry. On the other hand, you can invest the cost of the repair, or even a partial cost of the repair, and possibly gain Mr. Gentry as a customer for future sales and service down the road. Statistics bear out the fact that solving a customer's problem and complaint creates increased loyalty in over 70% of the cases. That shouldn't be ignored in your decision. If, however, the decision is to tell the customer no, it's important to make sure the customer is given a full and logical explanation of why the answer is no. Answer any questions the customer has about the decision. And provide the customer with alternatives. Give him a chance to talk with the service manager, if appropriate, or know who the next person is in your complaint resolution team. That may include the general manager or the dealer principal. Your service manager may also want to discuss the matter with the district service manager or offer to call the zone office for the customer. Present the customer with options. Suggest a second opinion to confirm your diagnosis and explanation. Let the decision be the customer's. Your job is to continue to be his advocate, to help him sort out the alternatives. As we discussed earlier, we've had a chance to thoroughly recheck all the work done in your accord relating to the 30,000 mile service and the air conditioning work done. We made a complete inspection of the air conditioning system and found that the system was properly charged, that no leaks were present, all components were properly secured, and the compressor belt was properly adjusted. Again, our opinion is that the compressor failure was strictly coincidental and not related to any work done by our service department. So you're not going to fix it? We can fix it, Mr. Gentry. We can have the compressor put on urgent order and have it here tomorrow. We could have your car ready late in the day. In order to help you out, we won't charge you any diagnostic time, but we will need to charge you parts and labor for the compressor and the receiver dryer unit replacement. Can I go ahead and authorize this agreement? That stinks, Rod, and you know it. I want to talk to your boss. I can certainly let you talk with him if you like, Mr. Gentry. He and I have discussed your situation, and we feel the best solution for you is our offer to assist you with the diagnostic costs. Can I suggest another option to you? Like what? Apparently you're having a problem accepting our assessment that the compressor failure was purely coincidental and had nothing to do with the servicing or charging of the air conditioning system. Is that correct? Yes. 
One more option, Mr. Gentry. Let me get in touch with the Honda rep. I'll explain your situation, and he may be able to help me assess the situation better. Also, he may have some ideas or alternatives that I haven't thought of yet. Do I have your okay to do this? I could also sue you. Yes, I'm fully aware you can go to court anytime you wish to do so. I'm hoping that we can resolve this so you aren't unhappy. I will see. Let me talk to your boss. All right, if you hold for just a minute, I'll transfer you to my service manager, Mr. Dietrich. The customer always has the option of talking to your service manager. Another reason why knowing how your complaint resolution team The service manager is there to back Rod up. Using the same techniques of reviewing the key points of the complaint and giving the customer the confidence that he is being understood. If no new facts develop though, and the problem continues to be unresolved, the answer remains the same. I'm sorry that we can't go to the extent that you'd like us to on this, Mr. Gentry. I'm sure it's very disappointing to you. I'd hope that we could have reached some sort of agreement, but in this case, I'm afraid our offer not to charge diagnostic time is still available to you. Telling a customer no is a last resort and should never be seen as the end of a relationship with a customer. Always leave the door of resolution open by repeating what you can. It's hard just to say no and walk away. You almost have to explain that to them. No, because. Uh, you try and do as much as you can to help them and uh, get it resolved. Successful handling of difficult calls still depends on your skill and professionalism in meeting the customer's needs. The objectives we've shown here, identifying the steps of handling a customer complaint call and identifying techniques for how to say no, are guidelines to follow. Your addition of professionalism, sincere interest and helpfulness, providing a value-added approach will make the difference.